Hello, my name is Surya Yin. I am a visiting scholar in MIT UTM Sustainable City Program. In this video, I will be reviewing the Sengkid River Restoration Project as a good example of sustainable city tourism development in Malaysia. For centuries, people have lived along rivers. Rivers are a source of life. They provide water, food, transportation, places for recreation, and much more. For these reasons, cities around the world are connected to rivers. As more and more people seek to live in cities, driving up land prices, many urban rivers have been filled in to make space for growing populations. Unfortunately, filling in rivers can worsen flooding and water pollution problems. Some countries regret having filled in their rivers and are trying to restore them. Malaysia is one such example. The Sengkid River flows through the center of Johor Bahru, the capital of Johor State in Malaysia. The Sengkid River used to be the primary waterway and a source of life for many people when Johor Bahru was a small town. People sold their products from their boats. For many, the Sengkid River was a source of their cultural identity. Johor Bahru has become the second largest city in Malaysia. It was also seriously polluted. Many people avoided going near the river because of its strong odor. Tourists had no interest in coming to the city. They used it only as a layover on their way to Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, or Malacca. In 2005, the city decided to cover up the river to use it as a sewage system and a main road. When the cover was added, flooding worsened. Now, Johor Bahru wants to become a world-class city. It seeks to expand tourism. To achieve this goal, the city wants to restore the Sinkit River. To do this, it will take the cover off, build water treatment plants, introduce flood mitigation systems, and beautify the river, making it attractive for recreation and business. Mr. Ab Halim, a project management officer from the Iskandar Regional Development Authority, explained the rationale. We identify that Johor Bahru uh, suffers uh, with what we call it uh, urban decay syndrome, where there's no population, declining businesses, and then uh, no activities. Uh, river uh, Sungai Seket is heavily polluted. And they, they said that uh, Johor is smelly because of untreated uh, point source of uh, pollution. Again, no pollution, no business and all that. So uh, with that uh, issues, or what we call it urban uh, decay syndrome, we initiated this Johor Bahru transformation program. Uh, and then we seek government funding, uh, federal government funding. Uh, in, uh, in this initiative started 2010 uh, in detail. We do the, all the design calculation, design detailing. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, we successfully secure government funding about a uh, ceiling cost about 240 million for this project. At first, digging up the river in the middle of the city sounded like a crazy idea. The cost would be substantial and a lot of people would be affected. My recent study of Johor's effort to promote sustainable city tourism found that the Sengkit River Restoration Project is a valuable and noteworthy idea. Mrs. Nobaisura Binti, a city planner, explained how Johor Bahru is seeking to promote environmental and cultural conservation, foster economic development, and ensure physical connectivity and walkability. So the lesson learned by covering the river is is only the the apa, the short term mm -hmm. short term mm. solution. Yeah, so, uh -huh. yeah. For the long term solution, mm. this is what we did on mm -hmm. the site. We try to settle the environment mm. issue, the flood issue. Yeah. We try to make it the river as a, the heart of mm -hmm. the city mm -hmm. to make yeah. it vibrant uh -huh. city. We have to do that. There's a lot of history for Johor mm. Bahru City Centre, yeah. so it's so important for JBC Centre mm. actually. 
We want to to apa, increase the mm-hmm. economic value, the environment, mm-hmm. and the identity of mm-hmm. Johor Bahru. Yeah. And now we are trying to rebranding the image oh, okay. and identity of Johor Bahru. We want the new brand for mm-hmm. Johor Bahru City Center. So okay. we benchmark at Korea lah, just mm-hmm. exactly like that lah. Mm-hmm. We want to to promote uh, Sungai Seget as a new product mm-hmm. in JBC Center. Mm-hmm. The must visit place lah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's good for environment. It's good for the image of the city. It's good for the public, the tourists. If you can see the future image for Sungai mm. Segit, I think all the Johorians will be proud. Okay. Yes. The Segit River Restoration Project also illustrates importance of democratic governance as a part of sustainable city tourism development. Johor Bahru has been able to make great strides by consulting with stakeholders minimizing social impacts, providing fair compensation, and building strong partnerships. Mr. Abhalim explained how democratic governance has been used to win the public support. We do a lot of engagement with our stakeholders. We call it a focus group discussion, meetings and workshop, and one-to-one discussion. The first one, uh, we started with all the building owners, the big, big players like uh, Comta, uh, City Square, Public Bank and all the big, big business owners in this area. So we want to know what is their acceptance towards this uh, project, including what kind of environment that they want to see within this area. The first uh, proposal uh, design for this area, we want to make it as fully pedestrianized. There's no motor. A uh, vehicle to be uh, at uh, Jalan Wong Fu. So we want to make it pedestrianized. So after we engage with all the stakeholders, they not agree. They say that the Jalan Wong Fu is a main thoroughfare of Johor Bahru. There is no uh, benefit of doing this. So we come back to a uh, combination of uh, uh, river rejuvenation and uh, some sort of uh, public transport. Though his shop was badly affected by the construction, Mr. Chan Lim was happy with the project. Oh, suka ha. Kalau selalu buat ini, so cantikkan ini tempat ini bandar. Kalau banyak banyak luar ni klim ya, mesti makan angin, jalan-jalan. Kita sudah lapak ya, hasil lain-lain. Minimizing social impact is important for public project management, but having a long-term plan, such as a city master plan, is a major asset for the project. The plan provides an overall framework and attract resources. Mr. Adam Lee, a board member of Choho Area Rehabilitation Organization, a local social service NGO, has a great hope for the city plan. But now we've got great plans. Mm. We're going to have like Venice. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like yeah. down there now, yeah. right? This river restoration project in Johor Bahru <laughs> offers six lessons for other cities in developing world seeking to promote sustainable city tourism. First, conserving and beautifying urban environment is a key to promoting sustainable city tourism. This may involve restoring ecological features for use by both city residents and tourists. Second, sustainable city tourism need to conserve urban cultural heritage. This is what makes each city unique. Cultural heritage attracts tourists. Third, physical connectivity, particularly walkability, is at the heart of sustainable city tourism. Tourists must be able to walk around the city to enjoy it. Fourth, sustainable city tourism can and should expand the economy of the city. The goal is to enhance the well-being of both locals and tourists. Fifth, democratic governance is crucial to building public support for sustainable city tourism. Public investment in infrastructure, for example, are more likely to serve the general public when the public is consulted on design and finance strategies. Last and most important, never mess up your river. The river will take good care of us if we take good care of it.